Good morning everyone. Today we'll take a look at this UPS from APC. Now this thing is an absolute giant. This is a regular UPS that you might find in a home or office and this is the one we're going to be looking at today. You can see that it's absolutely ginormous. Now if you don't know what a UPS is, typically you would connect your computer to it and then if your home loses power you'll lose your lights but whatever's plugged into the UPS in this case a computer continues running it did not turn off so that's the basic idea of UPS but nowadays people don't just use them for desktop computers they also use them to keep their laptop going their Wi-Fi router all kinds of gadgets that they want to keep going when the power goes out now aside from the large size of the UPS what you'll notice is this really nice display on the front. Now this is from APC and something I want to tell you is that this is made in the Philippines. Yes, locally made in Cavite. So that is a big thumbs up. Now this was actually given to me for free thanks to my friends at PC Works and APC, but this is a demo unit. It's not brand new. The batteries aren't in perfect condition, but still I'm very, very thankful, obviously. Now, one thing that's nice is it comes with this receipt which tells you all of the tests that they performed. So I can see they did a visual inspection, DC wires polarity, cold boot verification. There's so many tests that they've done. So it's nice to know that they're doing the quality check before sending this out. Now if we look at the screen, 230 volts coming in, 13 events, that's how many power outages I've had. Uh, some of those were simulated, some of them were real because of Morocco upgrades or because of the typhoon. Now 178 minutes, that's how much time I have left to run my computer and the monitor based on the load, which is currently at 17 watts. Now I'm using an Intel Nook, which is this little thing here. That's actually my desktop computer. And then this Samsung display, I'm not sure of the exact model, but you can see they're very, very power efficient, only 17 watts being consumed. Now, if we turn this sideways, we can get a better idea of why this thing is so large. Let's remove this sticker. I've actually been testing this for around, I think over a month, but I didn't take the stickers off because I wanted to show you that on camera. You'll be able to see the lead acid batteries inside. Now, I believe this is actually two batteries that are being combined, but it's very, very easy to replace this. Unlike some UPS where you need to use a screwdriver to open the unit, this one is extremely simple. You see, you can just pull it out like that, disconnect, and then put in the new battery. Of course, make sure you shut down the UPS before you do that. And that is something to be aware with any UPS that eventually you will have to replace the battery because lead acid batteries don't last forever. But I can say that APC, the quality of their batteries is so, so, so much better than the cheap generic UPS. Now, if we take a look at the back of the unit, you'll see we've got six sockets for battery and surge protection and then two which are just surge by themselves. That's very useful if you want to protect an appliance from surges, but you don't want it to drain the battery if your power goes out. Another thing you'll see is you have your telephone in and out. So again, you've got some protection there. You've got your ethernet in and out, again, very useful. And then you have this one here, data port. Now, this is very useful for people who have servers or a network attached storage or any device like that. Let me show you why. In the box, they include a USB cable, which can plug into the UPS. And then this plugs into your computer or your server. In this case, I'm going to plug it into the Intel Nook. What you'll see is the computer has found the UPS through USB. Current charge remaining is 63%. And if we go into shutdown options, we can choose to turn off the computer after using the UPS battery for a certain amount of time, or when the UPS battery only has a certain number of minutes remaining, or when the UPS level goes below a certain percentage. So we'll set it to shut down after one minute of UPS, just as a demonstration. So I'm going to turn off the power going to the UPS to simulate a power outage. And there you go. You see there's already a warning on this and there you go, you'll see that the warning on the Mac actually came out 
before the unit started beeping. So it already knows, hey, you've lost power, we're running from battery backup, and there you go, it shut down. That seemed a bit quicker than one minute, but I don't know, I mean, you can adjust the settings. But that's very good if you're running a server or a NAS or something like that. You want to shut down automatically to protect itself. Of course, if you want, you can let it run on the UPS until it's completely empty. You don't have to have it automatically shut down, but it's a nice feature. Now, aside from the fact that this UPS can run your gadgets for longer because of the larger battery, what else is special about this? Well, you'll see on the box here, it can actually handle a load up to 960 watts. Now, that is quite a substantial load, and that's really useful for people who are running gaming PCs because the graphics card, CPU, everything, it's so high power. You need a beefy UPS. These little ones, usually they can only handle like 300 or 350 watts maximum. And honestly, you don't want to run them at their maximum for like a long time. You should have some kind of allowance. And actually, as a peak load, it can handle more than that. I showed in a previous video how it ran this hairdryer, which was up to 1.1 kilowatts, so 1100 watts. Let's try it out. I unplugged it from the wall, so now it's running on battery, and that's why it beeped at us. So let's turn this hairdryer on. Hopefully you could see that on camera. We hit 800 watts. We'll put it on the high setting. Now this will go higher than what this can actually handle for a prolonged time but as but as a surge it can handle it okay we went a bit over the top Okay, so we actually hit like 1.18 kilowatts, which is way over what it's designed to handle. But you saw that it managed to keep that going for at least a few seconds, but it's actually designed for a maximum of 960 watts. Now, another big difference between, thankfully you can disable that annoying beep. It's useful, but I don't like it. So another difference between this UPS and this one here, this is also APC. I bought this myself. Uh, this is modified sine wave, and this bigger one is pure sine wave. So anything that's plugged into this, it's nearly the same as plugging it directly into your wall. Whereas what you plug into this gets a modified power. So instead of being a nice smooth sine wave like that, it's a chopped sine wave, or it's almost like a pyramid where it's stepped to simulate a sine wave. Now, for a lot of computers, Honestly, it doesn't matter because their power supplies are switch mode and they can handle that fine. But for sensitive electronics or inductive loads, it does have a benefit of having a pure sine wave inverter. The easiest way to test what kind of inverter inside is to just plug in a standard AC fan like this. Now, hopefully you can hear that on camera. There's kind of a buzz. Normally you wouldn't hear that if it's plugged straight into the wall. Aside from the buzzing sound, it also won't run quite as fast as it usually does. Now, if we plug the same fan into this unit, you'll see it's consuming around 40 watts. I might have to zoom in on the camera, but there's no more buzzing sound and it's running much, much faster. It's just as if it was plugged into the wall. And here's another way that we can check the inverter. I have this extension lead going to the UPS. We have a, I think it's a 12 volt transformer here and then a small oscilloscope. So let's zoom in on that. And what you'll see is that it's pretty much a sine wave. Now, I apologize, this is a very basic oscilloscope and I haven't actually fully learned how to use it yet, but that gives you an idea of the waveform. It looks a little bit spiky, but I think that's simply because I haven't learned how to use this oscilloscope yet. But you can see it's pretty much a sine wave. Let me show you what the other UPS looks like, the modified sine wave. So this time we'll use our smaller UPS, which is a much more basic model. Immediately you can see that looks nothing like the pure sine wave. It's choppy, it's very choppy. Let me see if I can do anything to make it a little bit more obvious.
okay after a lot of playing around I'm still having a hard time showing exactly what I want but basically it's a modified sine wave I can put a demonstration or a picture on the screen and now I've plugged it into the wall so this is the power coming from Meralco again you can see it's a pure sine wave it looks a little bit spiky but I think that's just because of the way I've set this up and because it's a very basic oscilloscope uh, but again you can see that that actually looks very similar to our pure sine wave inverter Aside from the regular AC outlets on the back, it also has a Type-C USB and a Type-A USB port on the front. And you can use that to charge your cell phone and other gadgets. Not super exciting, but it is a nice little addition if you want to charge your cell phones because it can output up to 3 amp at 5 volts. The reason why they actually sent this to me is because Meralco managed to blow up a bunch of my stuff. My NAS blown up dead that's a very expensive unit my router blown up dead laptop charger blown up dead uh, a couple of light bulbs boom gone um, I think there's some other stuff so basically I lost a whole bunch of electronics now I did actually have a UPS it was a generic one that cost like 1200 pesos piece of junk battery didn't last it doesn't kick in properly sometimes it would just trigger by itself and uh, it basically just didn't do the job so now I have this APC and then I have this APC now I demoed it here for a desktop computer but for me that's not the intended use I would rather have this for my NAS for my Wi-Fi router and other small gadgets like that so that when the power goes out I can still be connected to the internet because even if your whole neighborhood loses power loses electricity your internet will continue working because your provider has their own battery backup so if you can power your wi-fi modem whether it's dsl or fiber you can still have internet so that's why these are so so useful not just for powering a desktop computer the fact that this is made right here in the philippines is a big big bonus for those with sensitive electronics of course having the pure sine wave is a bonus but for a lot of people this modified sine wave is just fine um, it really comes down to capacity how big the battery is inside so how long it can continue running and then the overall load like i said this can handle up to 960 watts this one i think is rated for like 300 or 350 watts so you have to bear that in mind when you're doing your purchase the only thing i would like to see is for them to move to lithium instead of lead acid that would be the real game changer now they've actually started doing that for some of their like super high-end commercial units but for these units aimed at consumers it's still lead acid so you do have that limited lifetime before you have to replace the battery if it was lithium like lithium iron or lifo 4 something like that then obviously we could get like a much longer life out of them especially with regular discharging and then charging up again if you live in a province where the power is really bad and you're constantly draining charging draining charging you're going to kill the battery much faster so that's another thing to consider if you think it's going to be drained all the time consider going for a larger version so that you don't drain it all the way to zero and then 100 percent, then all the way to zero okay i think that pretty much sums up everything so if you have any questions put it in the comment section and thank you for watching